we're in the second chapter in Eruvin, and we're talking about this well, this well with posts around it. The, the well's the circle in the middle of the graphic, and we learnt that the well itself is considered a private domain. So in order to draw water from it, in order to pull water from the private domain of the well into the public domain, we need to create a partition. So we're going to create a partition with these um, these boards around it. And we're learning, actually, about generally how you create partitions around public spaces to turn them into private spaces. These are really the principles which are coming out in this chapter of the Mishnah. And we closed yesterday at the end of the third Mishnah with a remark from Rabbi Yuda, And Rabbi Yuda started talking about sizing. He says, look, the, the posts could be expanded out. Let's just go back to the, the, the posts for a sec. The, 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 you know, the, this picture here describes or illustrates some posts which are really quite close to the well. But Rabbi Yudas says, look, you can go quite a long way out. Um, you can go as far out as two base sail, which is basically 5,000 amot square. By the way, this is the size of the of the of the Mishkan. So it's um, five thousand. It let's think about it as ten by fifty amot. We're going to le learn later. It's a bit like forty nine by forty nine amot, or a bit a bit more than that. So Rabbi Yudah said, "Look, we can go as large as two beit seah," and the sages said to him, "No, no, that only applies for personal dwellings like gardens or wood stores." But if we had more rural dwellings like pens or stables or backyards or courtyards, then effectively there's no maximum size. You know, we could go right up to, uh, I don't know, 50 acres. And Rabbi Yudha is now going to come back and talk about other characteristics of this space, which we're going to create the air of around. So Rabbi Yudha goes on to say, Rabbi Yudha Omer, im haitadere harabim, Muff sack tongue. If what if a public road ran right through our area, our, 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 the area we've designated as private, effectively ran right through next to the well? And Rabbi Yuda says, Yisal Kena Lutzadadin will have to divert the public road to the side. Rabbi Yuda will not let a public road run right through the enclosed area. And already here, by the way, you can see shades of arguments that you know we have in london today can a big road run right through the air of well some people say yes some people say no and then he goes on to um uh, so that's the the the, the statement of rabbi huda and rub and different rabbis are now going to come in with their take on these issues so rabbi akiva says Either for a public system or a public well or even a private well, they make posts. That means we're going to make posts like this picture here. We can do this for these three categories of well. But for a private system, they have to make a real partition 10 hand breadths high. And that's according to Rabbi Akiva. There seems to be some difference between these types. By the way, Rabbi Yudha ben Bava has a different view. Rabbi Yudha ben Bava Omer, you can only do these this trick with the posts for a public well. There seems to be some distinction between these different kinds of well. And that is partly, partly because a cistern, so a cistern is a, a water tank where we collect water. A well is a water source. There seems to be an issue about the water in this, the water in the cistern drying up. There's nothing to once you, I mean, we will fill the system probably in the middle of winter. So when the rain comes, we're going to fill the system. But as the spring passes away and the summer goes on, at some point, that system is going to dry up. There will be no more water in it. 
And of course, once there's no more water in it, it 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 it, it when it's no longer meeting the qualifications for the kind of area that you might put an air of around. At least that is according to um Rabbi Akiva. Um whereas a well, a, a private well or a public well, well, we know that's not going to dry up. And as far as a public system is concerned, well, you know, the public takes care of itself and people watch out for one another. There's no fear about carrying in and out of a public system if it dries up, because we know people are watching out over that. And Rabbi Yudar ben Bava is, is um, strict in the sense that he will only allow this to happen if we have a real public, if we have a real public well. In terms of a private well, he's concerned that people won't take care about carrying in and out of the public domain. And in a terms of a cistern, he's anxious that it will dry up. Now, he also said, so we're carrying on with Rabbi Huda ben Bava. So the, the structure of this part of the Mishnah is a bit like the structure of Mishnah Eduyot, where the sayings are arranged by teacher rather than arranged by subject matter. So we're going to have more sayings from Rabbi Yudah ben Bava, and in a minute we'll have more from Rabbi Eliezer. So the Odama Rabbi Yudah ben Bava, and Rabbi Yudah ben Bava also said, Hagina veha kar pef, shehein shivim avav veshairin, al shivin amar veshairin, mukefet gadeh gavoha asarat vachim. So he said you can carry within a garden or a woods or up to 70 cubits in a bit by 70 cubits in a bit. What's the 70 by 70 doing here? Well, 70 by 70 is 4,900. Again, he's working with our two bait sayer, 70 in a bit. By 17 a bit, is hitting the maximum size of 5,000 square a mock, which is two baits there. So he's saying he's sticking with our maximum size. But remember, we said that the garden or the wood store were essentially domesticated kind of places. He actually demands that there's something domestic in it. In other words, a watchman's hut or a dwelling place or it's near to the town. So Rabbi Yudab in Bava is making the distinction between domestic places, which can only be fenced out to 70 cubits by 70, plus a little bit, and rural places where you can really put an Erev in of any size you like. And Rabbi Yudah is going to come back and disagree. Afilu, Rabbi Yudah Omer, Afilu, Ein ba'ela bor b'siach u'maram u'tzaltun b'tocha. Even if it only contains a system or a ditch, or a cave. These are the kind of place, these are the kind of functionalities that we've been discussing until now. We can carry within it. And Rabbi Akiva says, Rabbi Akiva Omer, Afilu ain but a chat mikol elu, even if it's got none of these things, Matal Talim we can carry within it. Provided it's got, and I think this means to has the maximum of 17 a little by 17 a little. So Rabbi Akiva is only interested in the area. He's not interested in the least in what is inside. Now, now he gets, now you feel you're a little bit in Edward Yacht, right? With this list of witnesses. Rabbi Eliezer says, Rabbi Eliezer Omer, we know about Rabbi Eliezer. We know he's completely crazy. We've seen this right the way through the Mishnayot of Zerayim. And for that matter, his views on bris milah, Rabbi Yudah will, uh, Rabbi Eliezer will make a, a fire to forge a knife for a bris milah on Shabbat. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, im haya orka yatera rochba afilu ama'achat. If its length exceeds its breadth by even a single cubit, in other words, if it's not a perfect square, ain metal talim betocha, you can't carry within it. It has to be a perfect square. And I, I'm sorry to confess, I don't really understand why Rabbi Eliezer considers the need to have it a perfect square. And Rabbi Yehudi Rabbi Yosi comes in and says, "Afilo or kapi shnayim baruch ba metal talim betocha." Even if its length is twice its breadth. Is permitted to carry within it. 
But we haven't finished hearing from Rabbi, Rabbi Eliezer. Amar Rabbi Eli, he's a student of Rabbi Eliezer. Shamati me Rabbi Eliezer. I, Rabbi Eli said, I heard from Rabbi Eliezer. But I feel he could bait kor, even if it's as large as a bait kor. There's absolutely no limit here. And then he goes on. And I also heard from him. Now we're going to hone back in a little bit in the in the structure of Erevin. The residents of a courtyard we had, and one of them forgot to make the Eruv, forgot to join in the Eruv. So we're homing in on the whole subject of Eruvin. We haven't learned what making an Eruv is. We're going to learn that at the beginning of the next chapter, which we're going to look at tomorrow. But Rabbi Eli is already telling us in the name of Rabbi Eliezer that if someone in the courtyard doesn't participate in making the Eruv, he cannot carry, he can't use it. Beitu Asur, his house is forbidden. He can't bring stuff in and out of it as far as he is concerned. Just for him. But everybody else who participates in the era of, they can carry in and out of his house. And the Talmud explains here, by the way, that he achieves this by temporarily relinquishing his ownership in the courtyard. So at this point, they own the courtyard. They've got an Arab. It works perfectly well. They can carry in and out of uh, in and out of the courtyard. And Rabbi Yai continues. I also heard from him, from Rabbi Eliezer. Sheot sin. But akrav nim. That people can uh, be yotze, they're, they're, they can fulfill their obligation at Pesach with a, a herb called akrav nim. Now, this is called heart's tongue, or it seems to be called heart's tongue in English, but it's not tongue. This is not the tongue of an animal. This is a herb. So we must be talking here about the bitter herb. According to Albach, it's scolopendrium. And I did actually go out and find you a photo of scolopendrium on the RHS website. And sure enough, by the way, it is called heart's tongue fern. It seems to be some kind of greeny stuff. I'm sure it won't taste very good. And maybe that's why it's OK for bitter herbs. And then Rabbi Eli continues. This is maybe a more significant and maybe a criticism of Rabbi Eliezer. Maybe a criticism. Vechizarti al kol talmidav. I went around all his students. This is Rabbi Eliezer's students. We know Rabbi Eliezer came to a bad end. And he had a very unique view about transmission of tradition. I went around all his students, Uvikashtili Khaver, and I tried to find a Khaver, a Khavruta, Velo Matsati, and I did not find one. 